Welcome to Romeo and Juliet, my presentation on the major characters. Feel free to stop the video as needed so that you can complete your organizer. This is a scene from the 1968 version by Seffirelli. Romeo and Juliet is set in the 1300s in Verona, Italy. It's set in the middle of the summer where the Elizabethans thought that those few warm weeks of summer made people a little crazy. They weren't used to the warm weather and they would do strange things. And Shakespeare takes that background information and uses it to um, drive the behavior of some of the characters in the play. The play will only be five days. It starts on a Sunday, ends on a Thursday. By the time the play is done, many people have lost their lives. The names of the characters in the play are very meaningful. Um, some of them, uh, such as Mercutio, which comes from the word mercurial, which means changeable, unpredictable. When you look at Mercutio's character in the play, he is just like his name. He's very flighty, um, unpredictable, kind of crazy. So his name fits him very well. Benvolio, if you know Italian, it comes from um, the word bene, which means good. And Benvolio is the good boy in the story. He's honest. He's a true friend. He's someone who we can rely on to give um, an honest account of what happens. And his name reinforces that. Tybalt is Juliet's cousin. And his name comes from a cartoon character that the Elizabethans would have known. And this character kind of looked like Puss in Boots with a sword, a cat with a sword. And when they call him King of Cats in the play, they're mocking him. They're making fun of him. The prince, his name is Aeschylus. And Aeschylus relates to the word scales. Uh, the prince is the judge. Um, as the ruler of the city, he's the final judge. So he um, is associated with lady justice and trying to find a balance to the problems that are going on between characters in the story. Paris, we all know from having just read um, The Odyssey, is the young man who ran off with Helen and started the Trojan War. And here Paris is a young man who seeks the hand of Juliet. However, um, he doesn't try to run away with her. Uh, someone else does that. Prince Aeschylus is, as I said before, he is the king of this city. He's actually not the king, he's the prince. Um, this is the principality. He's the ruler. Um, he's caught between the two families who are warring and he has relatives on both sides so he feels very torn. He cares about both families and he wants them to be able to get along and whatever he's done so far hasn't been able to bring that about. He tries to stop the violence but Thus far, he's been unsuccessful. Lady Capulet is Juliet's mother. She wants Juliet to marry Paris. Um, Juliet and her mother have a very formal relationship, as most um, noble women of this time would have had. Um, she did not do the child rearing. She had a nanny to help her do that. Uh, so you feel the distance when the two um, females talk to each other, that Julia and her mother respect each other, but there isn't a strong emotional bond there. Um, Lord Capulet speaks to Paris about Julia at the beginning of the play. Paris goes to the father as a courtier would at this time. And um, 
requests Juliet's hand in marriage. He has been rebuffed, um, denied. But on this particular occasion, Lord Capulet, in mid-speech, changes his mind and decides, well, if Juliet agrees to the marriage, he will agree to the marriage. And he wants Paris to come to a party that he's going to throw to meet Juliet in a formal situation and see how she feels about um, the wedding. Paris is usually depicted as 10 or more years older, so he would be in his mid to late 20s. He would, um, since he's a nobleman, he would have had enough money to be able to take a bride and um, provide for her. Juliet, as you know, is our um, lead female. She's about to turn 14. She's not yet 14. Um, just days away from being 14. She's been brought up to be the perfect Elizabethan girl, very obedient to her parents, does whatever they say, um, honors them, respects them. When her mother brings up the idea of marriage, she says that she's never thought about it, but she'll do whatever her parents want her to do. In fact, girls of 13 were married um, during this time period, so it wasn't that unusual a thing um, to be marrying off your daughter at the age of 13. Juliet has no girls her age in this play to talk to, so we get a sense that she is extremely isolated and that becomes important later on in the play. This is my favorite Juliet from the film in 1968. The nurse um, has been taking care of Juliet since she was a baby. She was the wet nurse and she talks about um, breastfeeding Juliet. She's also comic relief in the play. She's very bawdy. She has a strong sense of humor. She loves to laugh. She's not an educated character because she's one of the lower classes. But you get the feeling that when her husband was alive, she had a nice, healthy marriage. She has, she talks about, um, a lot of sexual innuendo and, um, She's a very happy character, and you get the sense that she really loves Juliet. She's the surrogate mother to Juliet and Juliet's closest friend in the play. Count Paris, or County Paris, is the young man who wants to marry Juliet, and um, he goes to her father, petitions for the marriage. He's eventually allowed to meet her and talk with her. Um, and they like him because he has a lot of money. Rosaline is a very interesting character because she's actually a phantom. She's not in, she's not a character that appears in the play, but she's talked about and she motivates the action of some of the characters in the play. And it's a great plot device that Shakespeare has um, come up with. So um, Romeo is in love with her at the beginning of Act 1, but he is um, not happy since she refuses to return his love. Um, Lord Capulet is her uncle, so she is the cousin of Juliet, which makes for a strange love triangle if you think about it. And uh, as I said before, she was never seen, only spoken of. Tybalt is Juliet's cousin. Um, Tybalt is a great swordsman. However, he has a very bad temper, which a person who has access to violence, um, access to weapons and is violent is not a good combination. So he is a volatile character. You get the sense that he's ready to explode at any minute. He says he hates all the Montagues. He's completely invested in the feud between the two families. He tries to get Romeo kicked out of the Capulet party when Romeo appears there. He is one of the definite antagonists during this play. Lord Montague is concerned about his son's moody behavior. He feels Romeo may take his own life. He describes Romeo as um, locking himself in his room by day and 
walking around in the dark by night. And he's basically afraid that um, Romeo is going to do something um, desperate because um, all the signs are there. However, he doesn't know that it's because Romeo is in love with a girl and the girl doesn't love him back. As an adult, he should be trying to stop the violence between the young people, but he's just as caught up in the violence as they are. He runs out into the middle of the street at the beginning of the play and calls for weapons, um, just like the young people. Lady Montague is obviously his wife. She's very concerned about both her husband and her son. In Act 1, she says that she's glad Romeo was not a part of the initial violence. Um, and she seems to care a great deal about him. Um, there were three fights prior to the beginning of this play, which we should be aware of. Um, later on, she kind of disappears from the play. She's spoken of, but we don't see her or hear her. Benvolio is Romeo's cousin. He is, um... Concerned about Romeo's strange behavior. He talks to his cousin. He decides that they should attend the Capulet party. Benvolio wants Romeo to go to the party to see that there are other beautiful girls and Rosaline is not the only girl in the world. Romeo will go to the party for another reason. Benvolio tries to be the peacemaker. Whenever there's a violent scene, we see Benvolio trying to um, stop it. Um, or prevent it from happening. And when he gives accounts of the violence, he gives an honest account. Romeo, of course, is our lead male. He's in love with a girl named Rosaline, but she does not return his affection. His cousin says that Rosaline is not the only girl around and wants him to meet other girls. Romeo meets Juliet near the end of Act 1, at the Capulet party and it's love at first sight. When we see Romeo at the beginning of the play, um, he almost seems a little immature. He's pining for a girl who doesn't want him and he's totally fixated on her. Uh, but once he meets Juliet, he seems to kind of grow up very fast. They both do. This is a scene from the film where they meet. Friar Lawrence is um, really one of Romeo's closest friends. He's a, a, a priest and um, Romeo goes to him for advice. When he hears that Romeo wants to marry Juliet, he's against it. He thinks it's crazy. How can you want to marry one girl today when you were in love with a different girl yesterday? But he also very quickly changes his mind and agrees to marry Romeo to Juliet because he thinks it might bring the two families together. Um, and like several other characters, he's caught between these two families, both of which he cares about. Mercutio is a comic character and he loves to talk. He brings comic relief to the play. He also loves to fight. Which, if you think of Tybalt, if those two characters ever get together, might not be a good thing. He's educated, and this shows in his choice of words. He has a famous speech about Queen Mab, whom we will study during the play. Um, he helps Romeo and Benvolio crash or um, go uninvited to the Capulet party. He must be a friend of the Capulets because he's on the guest list. When they find out that there's a party, Given by the Capulets, Mercutio's name is on the guest list, and also pay attention to the other people who are on the guest list. And like the friar, he's caught between these two families. Okay, um, why are the two families mad at each other? Shakespeare never tells us. Um, maybe it's not that important as to why they're mad at each other. Maybe the Maybe there isn't a reason that would ever be good enough for to justify what's going to happen to the characters in this play. Anyway, I hope this helps you. Make sure you fill in your organizer. Bring it to class on the due date. And enjoy the play.